So tonight, as, uh, as everybody knows, this is my last night as a county commissioner. Kind of sad. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I told my wife when we drove up today to the building, I'm like, I can't believe I worked so hard to get there, and now I'm leaving of my own volition five months later. But, uh, you know, ever since I was a child, I've always wanted to make a difference. That's really all I've wanted to do with my life. Uh, I remember work, I worked for Ronald Reagan to be elected president back in 1980 when I was 16 years old. I remember standing out in front of the Bay Bridge sign waving for him back then. And I went to his inauguration. And uh, shortly after that, I convinced my brother, Derek, right here, to run for House of Delegates here from Queen Anne's County in the 34th District. And uh, I became his campaign manager at age 16. And ever since then, I've been involved in, in government. I've just, I've loved government. I've worked around government. And um, it kind of came to the culmination of that last year when, the, you know, the citizens here elected me as a county commissioner. And I tried to go to work right away with my fellow commissioners trying to make a difference. Uh, our first few meetings, as you may recall, were a flurry of activity, and I appreciate the willingness of my fellow commissioners to allow most of what I wanted to become real. All together as a group, I just want to go over some of the things we've done in the last five months. We eliminated the beach parking permit fee, we reestablished the county's economic development department, and we created a dedicated funding source for this and our tourism department through the hotel tax. We reestablished the cable franchise fund to underwrite QAC TV7. We hired an economic development director right here, Jamie Gilbert, who's doing a tremendous job. And we've now hired a planning and zoning director with economic development experience. We allowed the waiver of fees for nonprofits to use county resources. We eliminated fees for those paying their county taxes in semi-annual installments. We instituted a new economic development incentive program, the Bridge Program, to help existing businesses stay here in the county and to grow. And we provided our first grant from it to the county's largest manufacturer. We've reopened the commercial development pipeline, is what I think, with numerous large projects now moving forward, including several new hotels, restaurants, manufacturing facilities, and businesses all coming to the county, which will create new jobs, which will allow our citizens to quit the bridge and work where they live and play, which is what what I wanted to do. And we, we've got it open. We, we, uh, it's been kicked open. The door's been kicked open. We were able to begin a new era, I believe, in commissioner outreach and public input through individual commissioners holding town hall meetings. That's not really happened much before. We moved public comment to the beginning of the meeting to allow more input. Uh, we created a commissioner's corner television program where the county commissioners can tell the public what they've been working on. We interviewed planning commission candidates in an open meeting which I don't think that's been done before. And we created a finance committee at the recommendation of Commissioner Wilson to allow local residents to give advice to the commissioners on budget and finance matters. We joined the Clean Chesapeake Coalition to help clean the bay, and we moved forward with phase one of the engineering for the Southern Canal and Sewer Project to help our homeowners and clean the bay. We rehired some local positions, including roads and parks crews, to better maintain our roads and trails, and we hired a county risk manager to better oversee workers' compensation and reduce costs there. We reorganized our county government structure to become more efficient and effective. We put together an MOU for the YMCA that did not commit any local dollars. We got our only local channel put back on local cable TV. And we reestablished the July 4th fireworks for the county. I think we've been pretty busy the first five months. <laughs> and I think I've just about done everything I promised to do in the campaign, almost everything. Um, and I believe we've made a real difference for our county. And now I've been asked by Governor Hogan and our Secretary of Transportation to help them make a difference for the state. And I knew when they asked, I had to say yes. Um, they asked, they have appointed me as a new administrator for the Maryland Transit Administration. This position, as I mentioned earlier, oversees the Baltimore City Transit System, which includes the bus, rail, the light rail, and paratransit. And also it oversees statewide, um, the commuter bus service, the MARC train, and the statewide operating systems. Every county has their own version of county ride. And the MTA puts about $100 million out into all those counties to help fund and oversee that. And while this is a challenging time to move into Baltimore City into this position, I'm honored by their confidence in me to lead and make dramatic improvements in this billion dollar agency. And while I'd love to stay and serve in both capacities as MTA Administrator and the County Commissioner, the Maryland Constitution prohibits serving in two offices of public profit at the same time. And to be honest, the practical demands of the position at the MTA would not allow me to fully serve the citizens as commissioner. I talked to one of the former MTA administrators this week. He said, Paul, you can get ready for 15 to 16 hour days every day. And um, I believe it. So therefore, on May 10th, I will regrettably serve my last day as county commissioner for this term. But on May 11th, I will begin my tenure as the appointed uh, Maryland Transit Administration Administrator in Baltimore City. And I invite you to come up and see me sometime if you get in the city. 
Uh, I want to thank my wife and, their fa and family for their support during my campaign and over the last five months of many meetings away from home. I also want to thank my fellow commissioners for their friendship and support. We've become a really fun team together, worked well together. We don't all see eye to eye, but that's great. That's what makes a great team. You get different perspectives. And, uh, but when we come together, we do it respectfully. We all work together. Even tonight with this thing on the bill, you know, working together as a team, that's how you get things done. So, uh, and I want to thank the county staff. All, a lot of them are here and those who aren't here tonight, they have, they're just true consummate professionals and they've made the job of being a commissioner a real joy. I also want to thank the citizens of Queen Anne's County for their support over the years in my many capacities here in local government, including transportation coordinator for the Department of Aging, county administrator, and now finally county commissioner. I hope to continue to have your support and friendship as I now move into a statewide capacity and work to make a difference for all Marylanders. So I thank you. God bless you. God bless Queen Anne's County, and God bless the state of Maryland. Thanks.